Alaphilippe leading up Roglic for bonus seconds. Avon Apollo attacking on a descent. Then everyone sits up. This was the first road stage where there might be GC action in the Vuelta of Spain. They just travelled down from the Netherlands to the Basque Country. We've got a pretty hard stage tomorrow, actually. But this had a punchy finish. There was we didn't expect big GC gaps on a stage like this. There was two 5k, like six percent, five percent climbs, and then an 800 meter punch to the finish. It could have been one for the break, but it just wasn't big enough. Lutschenko was there with shorter Marky Drizzas and Okamika, but Bora and Jumbo Visma were interested in chasing for Igita and Roglic, respectively. Even Cavagna helping out, presumably for world champion Julian Alaphilippe. Ineos didn't really help. And here you see the break is caught, 35 k's to go at the intermediate sprint. That's Bennett on the right-hand side going for the sprint. We didn't really see the break capture or the intermediate sprint properly. So grouped together, it's going to be a GC day or at least a winner from the peloton. Jumbo Visma pushing with Feeney in the red jersey, Turnison and co. and Ineos with Clock and Van Baal to be in position before this important climb. Here you see Kirsch say to Julien Bernard, he did a great job on Von 2 last year for Elisande and Molleme. He's a really good domestique to push on this climb. And already, three Stevenines and Seri are dropped, like practically at the base from quick step. They ran out of their domestiques very, very quickly. Igita as well was under pressure, who Bora had been riding for, and Cataldo and Bernard look so similar. So sorry if I've mixed them up. Ayuso and Igita under pressure. Ayuso, who I thought was quite good in terms of punchy finishes, getting dropped. They would come back, both of them, but it didn't bode well for the final finish. And Mads Pedersen sitting in fourth wheel after his Tour de France, looking very, very good. Almeida's got Plants in front of him. Rodriguez on the right with Sivakov. Yates is there. O'Connor's there on the left-hand side. That climb was 1K steep at the start and then really flat at the end. So those riders who were dropped or under pressure maybe, like Hayter at the back here with Aguita, were able to come back. But Yamo Visma kept the pressure on with Chris Harper. Omen would come back later after the technical descent that's coming up. There's three, two, one bonus seconds also available at the top of this climb in 1,700 meters that Roglic would probably go for. And here we are, Alaphilippe launches maybe to take seconds away from Roglic. He looks over. I don't know if he was going to contest it or not, but then when he sees Alphalete jumping, he's like, I'll go for it. Then Vine sprinting as well. And there's also KOM points available, but they're not at the same place as the bonus gate, which I only realized when I was editing the video. Roglic torches Alaphilippe, which isn't looking good for Alaphilippe's finish, then sprints again because he sees another gate, but then slows up because it's actually the mountain points gate. You see the Puerto de Montaña on the top of the screen. It's actually Santiago Petrago, I think, who's looking good for Bahrain, but he didn't go so well on the finish. And here we have that technical descent, and even Paul goes to the front. And it didn't look like, I mean, he was pushing hard and there were almost splits opening up. But I think he's gone to the front here on this technical descent to try and keep himself safe. And because he's not comfortable following others on a technical descent like this, like he was doing on the Lombardia descent where he crashed. So he went to the front, but Alaphilippe fourth or fifth wheel wasn't opening up the gap because there were splits like Almeida wasn't here. I can't see the Bora hands grower guys either. Not all of Ineos riders were in group one or two at this point, And there's not that much time between the end of this descent and the finish, but it seemed like the plan for Quickstep was to go for Alaphilippe in the finish and the groups came back together. So it's kind of curious to see Evan Hall pushing on the descent and he looks at Alaphilippe and they just have, I think, maybe Van Vilder in the group. All the domestiques other than Van Vilder were gone today. Evan Hall gets on the radio and so nothing really happens. Kind of curious. And Jumbo Visma wait for their domestiques. Omen and co to catch back up. There's counterattacks from Astana. That's brought back by Movistar as well as, I think, Nibali went for a move with Tarame, but then Kenny Elisson was marking that. And they didn't work so hard for nothing. They're still going for Pedersen in this final sprint. And Pedersen did well in Etoile de Bessege, a February French race in a punchy uphill finish, but this is a bit harder. And Primoz Roglic is here too. Ineos star pacing with Van Baal, who's off to Jumbo Visma next year. We talked about it on the, on the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast. Go check out our transfers recap. And this final is all about position. Position, position, position. If you are entering this climb that deep in the back, you are going to be in trouble. You see Roglic moving up 
almost at the start. And I think actually it was Oliveira and now Rojas is pulling here for Enric Mas. Mas enters the climb in pu- beautiful position. That's not Avon Paul moving up on the right-hand side. That was Ilan van Wilder who looks behind and notices, damn, I don't have Avon Paul on the wheel. Avon Paul enters the climb in bad position. Alaphilippe was kind of trying to follow Primoz Roglic wheel. You see Roglic move up to the front. Chavez, I think, attacks on the right-hand side. A little bit of a fruitless attack. O'Connor marks here. Mas goes with him. Roglic is like, nah, this ain't going to stick. He waits. He's patient. And then Kenny Ellison, he's looking back constantly to see where Pedersen is. He wants to lead out Mads Pedersen. Hinley and Kelderman are there. They're both riding for their own GC. It all slows down. You see Hayter moving up the inside of Alaphilippe saying, I'm here because there's a speed difference. Roglic is trying to keep space in front of him. He's not following a wheel exactly. And then Ellison looks back again, sees Pedersen there, and Pedersen is going to basically barge Hayter <laughs> into Narnia. Hayter gets squeezed so badly and loses a chance at a sort of top three result right here as Pedersen shoots this gap to Ellison's wheel. Ellison then launches it, and then Pacher and O'Connor come together, which squeezes Hayter back further. Roglic is keeping his sort of right open a little bit on Mars, but no one's going to come up on the inside of him either. He's on Pedersen's wheel right where he wants to be, and I do wonder whether, whether Kenny led out almost too hard. With it, because he had Pedersen on a bit of a gap. I mean, Kenny's in great form. Voltra Burgo showed that almost career best form. Roglic launches up the inside. He says, Thanks very much for the quicker line to Mads Pedersen. And this is exactly like the sprint where he beat now teammate Christophe Laporte in Paris Nice last year. And once he's got a gap on Pedersen in this long, over 20 second sprint, he wins the stage by like four bike lengths. Roglic is back. He was Froglic the other day. He goes into red tomorrow. Big win for him. It was not a long climb, punchy finish. So we don't know about the long climbing, but looking good for Roglic. Winning ahead of Pedersen. Still up. Like an incredible performance from Pedersen on this finish. Everyone else is a climber ahead of Mars, Pasha, Sivakov, O'Connor, Hater, Avonapol, Keldman, and Hindley. So Avonapol doesn't lose any time on the road. Neither do the Bora leaders, but Carapaz and others do. Like Simon Yates lose seven seconds. Here's what Roglic had to say after the stage. It's really just the beginning of the Vuelta. I mean, uh, but anyway, I always say yes, uh, it's better to... To have some seconds in front and behind, uh, but uh, yeah. In terms of GCs, already some pretty healthy gaps opening up. Like these bonus seconds add up. And go and read the article about the climbs of the Vuelta on lanternrouge.com.au. There's not that many hard climbs in this race. Roglic is already 26 ahead of Sivakov and Gagan Hart, and he's 33 ahead of Carapaz and Rodriguez. Yates is on 51 seconds. So these are big gaps. And I know Sierra Nevada's hard, but there's another TT to come as well for Roglic. He's looking pretty good. Hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe down below if you did, and I'll see you with Stage 5 Recap tomorrow. Ciao.